Hello, thank you for tuning in. Today, I wanted to go over something I've wanted to go over for a long time, which is Melville's marginalia. You might be wondering, what's the point of looking at Herman Melville's books that he owned, looking at what he underlined, and occasionally what he wrote inside of these books? I think there's a few reasons why it's interesting, and, and not only why it's interesting, but why it's actually a helpful thing to do in our understanding of history itself. For starters, I like Melville. If uh, you've seen other things I've put online, you know that uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm not a Melville scholar in the sense that I have a PhD on Melville. I did do a master's degree that ended up focusing on Melville and I wrote an essay about him. He's one of the few writers I know a lot about, um, someone I'm confident in speaking with some authority on, um, coming more to it as a fan uh, and a lover of his works and his life, uh, as opposed to a, you know, really in the weeds research scholar traveling, looking at documents firsthand and all that. So just to clarify. Uh, but the other reason I think that looking at Herman Melville's marginalia is worthwhile is that we get a really specific picture of what the American citizen in the 19th century thought about the events surrounding them. So to understand what I'm saying, it might help to give another example. If we look at Abraham Lincoln's marginalia, that is to say the, the things he wrote in books, or if we look at their diaries even, compare Lincoln and Melville. Lincoln is someone in power. He's someone with authority. He's someone who knew people would be looking at what he wrote, whether it was small and insignificant or not. He kind of knew because of his position of, again, power and authority, that people would look at what he said. And so that colors a lot of what someone like Lincoln is going to write. And, you, and this is true even of much less famous people than Lincoln. For instance, Emerson or Thoreau. These are people who were famous in their time, were thought of as public intellectuals, and so they kind of had a hunch that just about everything they wrote would be looked through. Herman Melville, on the other hand, he may have thought that for the first part of his career, but after the publication of Moby Dick, and then especially after the publication of uh, The Confidence Man in 1857, the reality is he became obscure and forgotten. Um, and so everything he annotated, everything he wrote in diaries, it's hard to imagine he truly believed someone would go through and look at them. Of course, he could never have foreseen that indeed one day they would look through his works um, and his libraries and his personal belongings. So that's why I think it's worthwhile because we're gonna see more of what, what I think is the common man's uh, emphasis on man's, <laughs> the, the, the common man's um, view of 19th century America, its changes, its struggles, because there's so much written about, you know, the influence of Darwinism and skepticism and all these new religious movements or the lack thereof. Um, and, but we view it in these dichotomies, right? Same thing with politics. We, we tend to think of politics as people were either Confederates or they were for the Union. But you also have millions of people who, like Melville, were very confused about the whole thing, um, who actually never really formulated their opinions, which is unfortunate. But I think it does give us a good picture of what was going on in this time for the average person. Because Melville, although he was a successful writer early on, he became progressively more obscure. So what is Melville's marginalia? Well, as I said before, marginalia is just what people write in books. You might have your own marginalia if you had to annotate books in high school. Um, Melville was no different. He wrote in his books. He underlined things, and oftentimes, just like if you picked up a random book on your bookshelf and looked through some things you've underlined, you probably don't remember why you underlined it. We don't know why Melville underlined things. We don't know why he wrote in them sometimes. We don't know what 
certain things he wrote even meant. Sometimes he'll just write letters, random letters on the side of his books and we'll never know what they mean. But the mar marginalia of Melville is pretty well preserved. And there's this really cool website called melvillesmarginalia.org, which I will link in the description, that actually uploads quite a bit of his marginalia. Now, not all of it, it's not all of it, but it's a very good selection. It's especially impressive given how much he has. And also it's impressive and cool just that it exists online because instead of having to travel to a research library and digging through archives and all that stuff, you know, th th they just kind of do the hard work for you. You want to know where he wrote, it tells you right away where he wrote. It also gives you some information. Now, I'm making this for the average viewer. I hope you don't even have to be a fan of Melville to find this interesting, but I think inevitably it will cater more towards those who are interested in Melville's works. So where do we begin? What do we, what do we even do here? Well, I think it would be best if I showed the website and after showing the website, just kind of, you know, explain some, some technical terms and, and things that, you know, are worth knowing. Uh, and, and again, I'm going to be as introduction level as possible. I don't want this to be uh, to have the academic barrier. I want this to be an interesting project for all people because I think stuff like this is so cool <laughs> and I wish this existed for every author. Um, and honestly, I wish there were more databases online for just uh, even, even less famous people than Melville, just random diaries and marginalia because it really does give us a good picture of what daily life was like uh, in these times, in this case, the mid 19th century, one of the most tumultuous and important time periods in American history. I had to get my coffee. Um, but we're looking at Marvel, uh, Marvel's Marginalia, Melville's Marginalia online. Uh, so this is the homepage. And it's, uh, as you can tell, it's got that old website feel, but I don't think it's an old website. It's just hasn't been updated in a while. So I'm gonna pull up the website and I just kind of want to go over a, a few things real quick. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is you can just, there's browse, search, policy, staff, media, events. Uh, we don't need to worry about policy, staff, media, events, photo credits, acknowledgements, contact support, and Melville at 200. But I think uh, you should check this out and you should support these people. If you're, if you like this kind of stuff, you should support them. I know I do. All right. So the first thing we can do is browse volumes. Um, and honestly, it's been a hot minute since I've used this, so I might have to <laughs> learn again how to go through it. But if you go to browse volumes, you get all these books and these are actually photo copies of the spines of the books. So they're kind of hard to read, right? If you're just looking at them, like, what the heck is this? It's Matthew Arnold, uh, mixed essays and Irish essays, etc. Um, if you look in the top left, when I highlight it, you'll see a little more info. You can click on it, and then you can also look at some some information. Now, this is where it gets a little technical. Again, this is more for the Melville scholars. So this is a little technical, but the SEALTS number is a number that this, this scholar basically compiled and put together all the books he could find that Melville owned, and it's something still being worked on but he numbered the books. So Seals number 19 means if you have the Seals guide book, which is really hard to find unless you have a research library on hand, um, but I'll put a link in the description, it'll redirect you to Seals comments on the work. It's a great work of scholarship what Seals did. He actually has really nice little paragraphs for each of the entries talking about when Melville acquired it, when he might have written in it. Spoiler, you might, uh, oftentimes we don't know, though, I'm just gonna say that. Another thing you can do, looking here, is you can click on like documentary note. And this is kind of what Seals wrote, although I believe this is written by someone else. It's like a, a different version. Yeah, it's not Seals. Someone else wrote this, but it just kind of goes over, okay, well, he got this copy, um, after its publication in 1883. So that would have been really, really late in Melville's life, okay? Um, uh, 
and yeah, it's just got some information there. It's, it's interesting. It tells you who's referenced it in other scholarly articles. Again, a lot of this stuff is for the scholars. I kind of want to just hop in to the work itself. But one more thing I'll go over. Also, they keep opening new tabs because, again, it's kind of a janky website. But it's good. It's a good jank. It's a good jank. Um, you go to browse volumes. There's all these up here. And there's another way to look at the, the, the category, which I can do later. But um, let's see some of his books. He's got Anatomy of Melancholy, Dante, Cuvier. There's some of the books he read in Moby Dick. Like, I'm, I think they have Beale, right? Yeah, The Sperm Whale and the South Sea Voyage by Beale. Uh, yeah, Milton. Some Shakespeare, I'm sure. You know, actually, do they not have the Shakespeare on here? They might not have Shakespeare on here. I'll have to double check. But they got Schopenhauer. Um, Wordsworth. All right. So yeah, there's, there's all sorts of cool stuff. So for the first episode, I actually wanted to go over some of Melville's marginalia for the Bible because one, the Bible plays a huge influence on Melville's work. And two, it gives us a really great look into the faith-doubt dichotomy or uh, controversy going on in the 19th century. So uh, look forward to that if you're interested. Let me know if there's anything I can do too, if you find this, like to make it more accessible, easier to interact with, or if you want links or access to things. Again, I know a lot about Melville, but I'm not like digging through research libraries. Um, if you're interested in reading my works on Melville too, let me know. Um, but yeah. I look forward to this first episode on Melville's Bible. All right, take it easy.